Um, so I'm Alex Gregorian, and I work at Walmart Labs, and I'm here to talk about uh, transformation of technology stacks um, with the backdrop of how we kind of did it at Walmart. Um, and I think it's, a, it's an important topic because uh, you, most people probably went through a migration of some sort from one technology stack to another, or you will go through it. Um, and in the past few years, I've been through a couple. I previously worked at PayPal, and we went from C++ to Java, and then from Java to, Ang to Dust and Node, then Angular and Node. And uh, at Walmart, we went from Handlebars and Backbone and Java to React and Node. And so over the years, I think I've gotten a little bit better at figuring out how to go about it and make it faster. So that's kind of the information that I'm hoping to convey on uh, the tips and tricks that I've learned and we as, a, as an organization have learned on how to really make it successful and how to make it fast. Um, so by the end of this talk, I hope you'll have the knowledge to kind of build your own strategy on how to convert a large organization to a completely different technology stack. Um, so we talk about what migration means uh, for Walmart Labs in terms of our size. I think our front end applications take about 10,000 requests per second. Um, I think there's about 400-ish engineers that we kind of have to train on React and Node um, and have them move their applications. Walmart.com consists of about, I think, around two dozen-ish front end applications that we had to migrate in the time. Um, where even though it looks like a one website, holistically, it's really different apps, home pages, separate app item pages, a different app. And so that's kind of the scale of transformation that we're talking about. And uh, currently, as of today, and going into Black Friday, 70% of Walmart um, is on React and Node on a platform that we open sourced about a month ago called Electrode. Um, and next year, we plan to have all of Sam's Club traffic. So Walmart Labs owns Sam's Club and Walmart and a couple of other brands that make up Walmart, like Asda and Walmart Canada, Walmart Brazil. So this year, we focused on converting most of Walmart.com onto React the Node. We're currently in progress of Sam's Club. We'll, we'll, plan, we'll release that next year. And uh, we're kind of step by step moving every application that Walmart Labs owns to this platform on React the Node. And so I think less than a year to migrate 400 engineers, two dozen-ish apps, and 10,000 requests per second, I think it's kind of a big deal. It's the best transformation that I've seen, uh, the fastest um, that I've seen in my career from one technology stack completely to another. Um, so to give some context about why we decided to migrate, we were on handlebars and backbone and Java apps. So as the move to mobile, I think uh, 50 or 60 percent of Walmart users are mobile users now, and they look at us through mWeb. Um, so we noticed the res uh, responsiveness hit the bigger our applications got, uh, particular checkout, for example. Um, so that, that, that was a, a big point of performance in, 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 in loading the app and the components, as well as the responsiveness after it's loaded. Uh, productivity was another, uh, I think the, the unidirectional flow Redux is amazing. Um, and as the bigger the app got, the more difficult it was to, and more wieldy it was to maintain. And the last thing that's a bit, I think, unique to us is reusability. Because we own multiple e-commerce websites, we tend to build the same pieces over and over again. For example, like a carousel, we have a carousel on the home page and then on the item page then the search page, and then Asda has their own carousels, so then Sam's Club has their own carousels. So you have dozens of developers kind of working on the same thing. And I think so for services, it's a much easier problem to solve or a more solved problem um, where you can have a service that takes requests from different, um, different brands and have them return data for, the, the, for that brand. But it's much more difficult to do on the, on the front end. And uh, so reusability was kind of a very big, unique piece for us. And that's where React kind of came into play with the component model. We can build the component once and we can share it across teams. So we currently have, I think, about 500 components that are used. 80% uh, of Sam's Club is, that it's in development, is reusing what Walmart has, but with different styles, different content, obviously different composition. But 
80% of the components that it, that, it's, that it uses has not been written. So those were kind of the reasons why we decided to take the plunge and try out Node and React and, and, and go down that route. So the first thing of how did we go about it and how did we start the transformation is um, we built platform first. A lot of the previous places uh, and previous migrations that I've been in, we usually take an app and we immediately start converting the app into whatever technology that we're switching to. Um, with, with Walmart, we decided to build platform first. Uh, the reason is previously when we convert an app and then we end up having to backpedal and make things reusable or figure out a more generic use case for functionality that we built for our infrastructure, like ops and deployment and uh, configuration management and logging and monitoring. And so we decided we're going to go platform first. Even though we're not going to have an app as fast, we'll at least have a stable structure and architecture to build on moving forward. So we built the platform team. And the thinking behind it was really small, super cohesive, and versatile. And by versatile, what we mean is they are generally full stack um, engineers where we have folks that did a lot of DevOps and service work uh, for deployment and, and uh, server configuration information stuff. We have front end experienced folks, we have, and, and, and back end obviously. So we needed a small team that can kind of work on anything across the stack. And we wanted to keep it small because whatever they do, whatever they touch is fundamental. And this small group affects a disproportionate amount of uh, influence across the organization. So we wanted to keep it small to keep them reachable. Uh, to kind of keep the direction the same, uh, and that way everything we build, it's aligned. It looks, it looks as if uh, it, there's a difference in, you know, it looks like there's a small group of people that are working on it, and it's reachable. Um, and once we did that, we started building organizational alignment. So I think this is one of the a key points. When an organization, uh, especially I think the business side of it, when they hear of migration, they get really anxious, right? We, they start having, the first thing they start thinking is, how many features are we delaying for this migration? Um, and why are we doing it? What are we going to gain? What are the benefits? And generally, there's a lot of tension that immediately gets caused of, of how long is this going to take? What is the business impact going to be? And are the benefits really worth it? Why can't we use what we already have? Um, so we found that the best way to address that is through preemptive conversations with leaders all the way down, because that anxiousness can spread anywhere in the organization, and it can happen at any level. So we started trying to meet with leaders, to the product managers, to the managers of product managers, to the directors, to the vice presidents, trying to set up the expectations of what are we, why are we doing it? What are we doing? Talking through concerns, um, and really trying to come together to a, to a central point of, of, an, of understanding. Um, because this alone, you don't, want, you don't want to have one side of the organization that's technology oriented be really excited and the business side be anxious and nervous about what we're doing and why. Um, so as we built the platform team and we started building out the platform, we started communicating with business and trying to get them to be more relaxed, take them out to massages, right, get them going. Um, and as we started kind of building the platform, we built a vertical team. And this vertical team uh, was very specific in, in who we brought in uh, to be part of that team. We wanted the individuals to be very senior, and we wanted them to be bought in. Since the, since the, platform, the platform is going to have issues, the transformation is going to have problems. You're going to hit unknown use cases. There's going to be things that you didn't know. We hit tons of stuff we didn't know. Right? And uh, you want people that are going to be with you all the way, that are, that are going to be supportive, that are going to see problems as opportunities. Um, so the, the people that we brought were senior, they were bought in, and they had to be vocal. They had to um, be able to express their angst and, um, on issues that they hit or what they felt should be better. Um, and we wanted them to be distributed. And by distributed, I'm not talking about location, more of where they, what teams they're coming from. We wanted a team that had these senior vocal bought-in individuals from different locations around the organization. That way, this team ends up serving as ambassadors. 
And it's a really important point. And I feel like this is one of the key things that really made us successful. And I'll kind of go back to this, uh, this idea in a, in a couple of slides. So with this senior vocal team that's made up of different uh, that's made up of different parts of the organization, we united both teams. That way we can function together, that we can work on any part of the application. So we had vertical teams working on the platform, platform working on vertical apps. That way we can figure out cohesively how to make things work. What are the best opportunities? Um, previously, what I've noticed is a lot of times we end up siloing where platform works on product infrastructure type things. and, and uh, the product team is dealing with their own problems. This way, we're all looking at the same problem. We're all being yelled at together. And uh, it's really one you know, where we move forward together. Um, and we needed to decide an application to migrate. So the first app that we wanted to migrate is, I think, common sense. We didn't want it to be too complex, too simple. We didn't want it business critical, because we wanted to allow time for mistakes, problems, and issues to arise. Um, we wanted server-side render. This is another really key thing for, for uh, Walmart Labs. Anything we build, most of it is server-side rendered. So we send HTML back from the, from the, from the server to the browser. Um, and that's also one of the reasons that we really liked React because of that capability. Um, it ended up being slower than we thought, but we fixed that later. Uh, so server-side render was, a, was kind of a, a key part. It, it improved the, the performance of what our users see, and it helped with our uh, SEO. And um, we want that team, that, the, the app that we're migrating to also be bought in. We don't want to migrate an app that doesn't want to do it. Um, <clears throat> so we chose this app that we call Collections. It's basically like a bedroom set or a bathroom set if you wanted to buy like a Batman bathroom. We, I think we actually have that at Walmart. We have like a, a bathroom set with old bat, Batman like shower curtains and stuff like that. So if you want to get a whole set, that's the app that we go. But it's relatively small in terms of how much traffic that it does, because generally people don't buy whole sets of, um, of those things. So we, we chose that app, and there was that constant feedback loop, obviously, of platform and product teams working together, refining, dealing with issues. And there's obviously issues with how do we log and monitor and, and our deployments. And what we built in platform, there was all these product features that we needed to support, like isomorphic image loading, and, and that we did not expect. Um, and so eventually, I think it, it took about a month or so, the application went live. We started monitoring it, fine-tuning it. So now we, have, now we have to deal with performance. Is the time to first byte around the same time? Is above the fold render the same? Is our conversion the same for desktop and mobile? Is it really productive? Are we getting the benefits that we thought? And one of the unique points of Walmart is, is it reusable? Can we theoretically reuse it in Sam's Club and across other applications? Um, so once we started getting that traction, convergence started going up, we picked our next application. And the next application, we went big. And it's risky, but it allows you to transform the stack and have the organization gain confidence quickly. So we picked Checkout. So we went from a page that I think like 0.08% of traffic goes to, to Checkout, right, which is most of our Anyone, anytime, anytime someone buys something, they kind of go through it. And Checkout is unique in that it's, it's our, one of our few client-side rendered apps. Um, it's a stateful flow, um, and it's a stateful client-side rendered flow, while most of our other apps are um, they're single page, but they're single page, server-side rendered, and there's no flow as part of it. Um, Checkout's complex, and it's business critical. So we went completely the other way. Right, super risky, but if checkout goes live relatively smoothly and is successful, you know that you can convert the rest of the company on it. And uh, at this point in time, there's still probably a few parts of the organization that might not be super confident. Like we got questions about, well, is Node ready? Is React the right way to go? Can it handle it? Are we really gonna get what we're looking for? Um, and so this is improving checkout and having checkout be higher converting immediately aligns the whole business to your side. When you're saying that we're going to make X amount of more, like more money because we did this, now don't you want to get the rest of the site on it? You know, you get a lot more support. Business people are very loving at this point in time, right? So we kind of did the same thing. We rinsed and repeated the checkout. Um, and 
once that completed, we did this mass migration where <clears throat> we have the simple, we have a simple app, we have a very complex app, one server side, one is client side, uh, and we decided to go full in, we're gonna migrate all applications immediately. So search and login, my account, profile pages, item, grouping, category, everybody just started migrating in mass. And this is where the ambassadors play a key role. Um, we went from having one team migrate of like five people on our side, five people on the product side, and in that one go to scale the migration, there's now 400 engineers in line with, with features, requests, um, with bugs and issues and training that's needed, and they need help and guidance on architecture or questions or uh, just they want a friendly chat to learn more. And there's no way our team of like six people can really scale effectively. Um, and this is the kind of the big worry that we had as a team. And so we invested heavily in this kind of ambassador program where every team that has migrated with us, well those two teams, Collections and Checkout, they were made up of people from different teams. So Checkout had people from Cart, um, Collections had people from Item Page and Groupings Page and a bunch of other pages. So these people ended up serving as kind of our anchor points. They were able to take the knowledge and take it back to the team. So they were able to take knowledge of the technologies. So they were able to assist in training and handholding. They ended up being the first line of um, the first line of any customer service needs that the developers and engineers had, uh, because they just had more inherent knowledge. During, the, during that first checkout and collections app, these people also worked on the platform. So that inherent knowledge of what Walmart looks like internally. They had knowledge of our infrastructure. They had deeper knowledge than, than most, most of, the, uh, of the teams. So they kind of served as those anchor points. So the amount of support that we had to do as a small team um, was relatively minimal compared to what it would have been. Realistically, if we didn't go down this model, we would end up getting bottlenecked. Right? There's no way we can give so much training that, that we can help so much. So what would happen is um, teams, it won't be, it won't be an escalation, and it would instead be quietly, apps will take longer to roll out. It'll take teams longer to figure things out. They might need to refactor more. They might need to go back, or, and their, their uh, release might not be as smooth and successful. They might have issues with conversion or bugs or whatever else. And so what will happen is the organization will quietly start missing timelines, right? Because it just takes longer for people than we thought it would. And so this is the way we, we kind of combat that problem, is by now every single team has someone there that has deep knowledge of the system. Um, so we're currently onboarding Sam's Club, and this is where we're starting to really see the benefits of reusability. But uh, I won't talk much about that. It's a separate topic altogether about how to do reuse. It's very difficult, and uh, it's a separate topic altogether. So after all that work, kind of what are the benefits that we're seeing? So we break out the benefits into two parts, customer experience develop and developer experience. On the customer experience side, along with this push for the migration of Node and React on our platform that we call Electrode, we also have 90% functional automation for our, I think 100% for our P1s and 100% for our P2s, and then it's like 70% for our P3s and P4s. Um, that was very powerful. We noticed that our bundle size generally got much smaller um, I think 40% by average is what we saw. And our performance increased up to about 60%. Depends on the page. So I think home page, we saw 60% improvement. Um, I think uh, checkout, which was the client side rendered, we saw something like 25, 30% improvement. So we saw significant improvement performance. Obviously our business metrics went up, right? Performance matters. Um, and we saw that impact. And then on the development side, we were able to push code much more often. Uh, our training, so usually what we had for training, uh, we, all, every new engineer kind of comes in and we give them this five-day boot camp of, of Java, of our Java app and how it connects. And, uh, and then our, we use Thorax as our handlebars, uh, handlebars backbone library. And we had to kind of give them training on all that. Um, so that reduced to basically about a day. We can kind of really throw them in now and, and, and let them swim. Um, so because of that training, because of the amount of time it took to set up the environment, 
it took about seven days until a developer made a first commit into the repo. Um, and it took them about two weeks to release that, uh, that commit. So we had a two-week cycle for every single release. So if you think about it, you join the company, you're a week in training, and you spend a couple of more days to get your first commit in, and then you're waiting two weeks to get that commit released. Um, so within that, this, this year, um, if you join the company now, our platform is open sourced, so you can see what you're going to work on before you join. Um, most of the 90% of what you do is, is, is um, just general React Redux node. There's nothing proprietary, so you can onboard quickly and you know what you're getting into. So the training is relatively minimal. It's more about our internal stuff and how we do logging and how do we do authentication and, 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 and how do we contact services. And um, it's more around centralized around our, that internal infrastructure piece. And the, so the first day you'll join, once you get out of training, you can do a commit um, and you can release it the next day. And so that, I think that was, a, that was a very big difference. And those differences change culture. When teams are unable to release daily, when they can hire someone in and that person's committing on the first or second day, you know, there, I think there's a significant impact in, 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 in culture of the company uh, in, in capability and enablement. And so with that, um, we also open source the platform that we worked on, Electro. It's called Electro.io. Um, and it kind of solved the three things that I talked about uh, in terms of what we really wanted to gain. We wanted to get up and running quickly. Um, so we have things like archetypes and boilerplates. Um, we wanted to make server-side render fast. So one of the big problems that we hit was Render to string on React is synchronous and kind of CPU bound, so it was relatively slower compared to things like handlebars where they just do string replacement. So we put a lot of effort into um, server side kind of templating and caching and uh, doing server side above the fold rendering only. Um, and that's how we saw like homepage uses both of those, and that's why it sees this big boost of improvement. Where instead of doing, if you're doing a full render on the server, instead of doing render to string on like three carousels, you'll do it once, put it in memory, and then you keep calling it up. And then you can templatize your components. That way we, we do string replacement for whatever is in the prop types. And the HTML code is cached. Um, and we'll only server side render what's above the fold. So those are the, that's how we saw those big improvement gains, is through those benefits, uh, through those modules. So that's what the, the, the big part that we focus on. And the, the third, and I think it's probably the biggest part, is around reusability. Um, how I'm, like the way I'm, I mentioned that we might build a carousel and you might build it for multiple applications. Reusability ends up being really, really difficult. You, want, you need components to be, you need apps to build the same and deploy the same. Right? You need components to also build the same, have the same webpack configs, uh, the same linting, Babel configs. Um, and you want to be able to manage hundreds of components at once. So I think we have nothing to the scale of Facebook where they have like 15,000. I think we have like 500 um, components uh, currently. And so we want to, if we want to upgrade to React 15, we want to upgrade all of them in mass. Or if we want to modify our Babel dependency, we want to kind of modify them in all mass. So we have this temp archetype where it's kind of like a template um, dependency that has all these other dependencies that you need but allows us to manage lots of components at once. Um, and then we have tools for, <clears throat> so because we have these 500 components, you want to discover them to reuse them. You want to interact with them and see what, ver what versions they are and who else uses them. And so we have tools that, instead of NPM installing your components independently and individually, um, it basically will consume all your components in your GitHub repo and it'll run them in the browser and you, it has a playground so you can see the integration code, you can see who uses it. Um, so basically, it focuses on these three things. That's kind of what makes it unique. Um, and so that's uh, how we transform Walmart. So we got from handlebars, backbone, Java, to React and Node. For 70% of the site, we started in December. We're going to Black Friday on the platform. We were able to build it and open source it at the same as well. Um, and I think in right after holidays, when we exit our moratorium, the other apps are actually built and ready to go live. We just didn't want to ramp them through moratorium. Um, so in the beginning of January, you'll see React, all of Walmart, 
um, we react the node. Thank you.